Have you been looking to play a blink deck but want something unique and off the grid? Do you want a deck that cheats big permanents into play with powerful ETB effects? Is the best win con one where you beat your opponents with overwhelming value? Then I think it's time we look at Ishai Ojitai Dragon Speaker partner with Kadama of the East Tree. Let's begin by looking at what both of our commanders do. Ojitai is a 4 mana 1 1 with flying that says, whenever an opponent casts a spell, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Ishai Ojitai Dragon Speaker. Our other commander Kadama is a 6 mana 6 6 with reach that says, whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser mana value from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's important to first establish that why Ojitai's ability is generically powerful, he's really only here for the colours. Kadama is the commander we want to build around and for some very good reasons. Firstly, on its own, being able to cast a permanent and then put another permanent into play with equal or lesser mana value is a very powerful effect, especially if those permanents have an ETB. Secondly, when we use a blink effect on those permanents, not only do we get to use their ETB effects again, but we get to put more permanents into play with their own ETB effects. And lastly, Kadama's triggers allows us to put permanents into play that we know otherwise would get countered by our opponents. So when our opponents play against Kadama, they really never know what they're in for and what permanents could come into play. So what is our overall game plan? Well firstly, we want to include permanents with powerful ETB effects, and contrary to the norm, we don't actually mind if they're a little expensive. This is because the higher the mana value of the permanent we cast, the higher the mana value that Kadama cheats into play. But because of this, we want to be able to include a lot of ramps so that we can get Kadama out early, and also be able to cast our expensive permanents. Where possible, we also want our ramp to be permanent so we can get the most out of Kadama's ability as well as our blink effects. Speaking of, we also want to include a good density of blink effects that either come attached to permanents or can blink multiple permanents at once for maximum Kadama value. The reason Ojitai was chosen as Kadama's partner was because we want to include the best blink effects possible and Blue White provides that. From there, we beat our opponents by overwhelming them with constant blink and Kadama value. Now while this list was created with multiple ways to win in mind, let's begin by first discussing the two easiest ones. First up is Craterhoof Behemoth, an 8 mana 5-5 five five with haste that says, when Craterhoof Behemoth enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is the number of creatures you control. A mainstay win con in creature heavy or go wide decks, here this becomes an effective way to close out the game with even a moderate number of creatures thanks to the number of blink effects we run. Blink decks can sometimes struggle to finish a game because most of their creatures provide value attached to weaker bodies, so this provides an effective and on-theme way of getting the job done. Our second main win con is Avenger of Zendikar, a 7 mana 5-5 five five that says, when Avenger of Zendikar enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 green plant creature token for each land you control. Also, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each plant creature you control. When we cast Avenger and the plant's ETB, this will cause an individual trigger for each plant that enters and allows us to put a permanent into play with mana value 0. Remember that lands technically fall into this category, so we can immediately buff our plants the turn they come in based on how many lands we have in hand. With even 3-4 to four lands that come into play, this should be enough to take out at least 1-2 to two players the next turn. And that covers our main win cons, though as mentioned earlier we do have others that I think you'll be able to piece together as we get further into this deck tech. But for now, let's move on to the cards that are going to help us ramp into Kadama as well as our other expensive permanents. Arcane Signet, Nature's Law and Three Visits are all 2 mana ramp options there to fix our colours early and efficiently. Bloom Tender is a 2 mana dork that can tap for up to 3 mana in our deck depending on what coloured permanents we have in play. Elysian Caryatid is a 2 mana dork that taps for 1 mana of any colour, though it can tap for up to 2 if we control a creature with power 4 or greater, which Kadama satisfies. Sakura Tribe Elder is a 2 mana creature that we can sack to put a basic land into play tapped, which not only fixes our colours but also grants us an additional Kadama trigger to hopefully put another land in play. Lanawa Visionary at 3 mana serves as a mana dork while also drawing a Sakata upon ETB, useful when we start using our blink effects and need the additional draw. Savala Heart of the Wilds helps us tap for a lot of mana if we have Kadama, Ishai or any similar creature that has a high power on the battlefield. In addition, it can also draw us cards when we cast or put into play high-powered permanents. Somberwald Sage is a 3 mana dork that produces 3 mana we can only use on creature spells, a great rate despite that restriction that gets Kadama or our other big creatures on the battlefield much faster. Springbloom Druid is a 3 mana creature that allows us to put 2 basics into play tapped provided we sack 1 land when it ETBs. Gaining only 1 mana for 3 isn't normally where we want to be in a big mana deck, 
but the fact those two lands ETB in triggers Kadama makes up for this fact. Topiary Stomper is a 3 mana creature that puts a basic into play tapped when it ETBs. Similar to Springbloom Druid, Stomper is here for the additional Kadama trigger, but it also makes a nice attacker and blocker once we reach its land threshold. Wood Elves is our last 3 mana creature that puts a land into play, except this time the land comes into play untapped, useful when that mana can be spent to cast another spell. Worn Power Stone is a 3 mana rock that ETBs tapped, but produces 2 colourless mana, an efficient ramp piece for the cost. Sky Shroud Claim is a 4 mana sorcery that allows us to put 2 lands into play, importantly untapped. If we have lands in hand to put into play thanks to Kadama, that gives us another 4 mana to use on our next spell. Otherwise, it's simply good for the cost to cast our bigger spells. Thran Dynamo is a 4 mana artifact that produces 3 colourless, a great return on investment in any deck with high mana value spells to cast. Undermountain Adventurer is a 4 mana creature that gives us the initiative when it ETBs, and also taps to produce 2 green mana or a massive 6 if we've completed a dungeon. Even though we likely won't often have the Adventurer tap for 6, just tapping for 2 and providing us the initiative is great value, especially when we start blinking it to move further into the dungeon. Keep in mind when assessing these cards yourself the mana value of these cards as well, because with Kadama out all these permanents also read, put another permanent into play with the same or lesser mana value. Elvish Piper is a 4 mana creature that we can pay 1 mana into to put a creature into play from our hand, while Halpak Piper does the same for 2 mana, but also can't be countered and can act as card advantage when transforming. Both creatures help us cheat the cost of our expensive spells while also getting around stack interaction like counter spells. In addition, with Kadama out we get to cheat an additional high costed permanent into play as well, making these creatures serve double duty. Our last mana accelerant is Smothering Tithe, a 4 mana enchantment that says, whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay 2. If the player doesn't, you create a treasure token. A great accelerant in any deck, but here the treasure tokens serve an additional purpose by triggering Kadama and allowing us to put a land into play for each treasure created. The colour fixing is also nice with some of our more pip intensive spells. And that covers all our mana accelerants. Now as you can imagine, when we have Kadama out as well as access to a good amount of mana, we're going to be playing out our cards quite quickly. So let's look at the cards that are going to help keep our hand full and fueling Kadama's ability. First up is AC, Tyrant of Gaia Strait and Tatiova Benthic Druid, a 6 and 5 mana creature respectively. Both allow us to draw a card with every land that enters the battlefield, with AC also allowing us to play an additional land each turn. Being able to draw cards from playing lands is a powerful effect, and to take advantage of this, as well as being a 3 colour deck, we are running as many effective fetch lands as we can to maximise the abilities of both these creatures. Cloudblazer is a 5 mana creature that draws us 2 cards and gains us 2 life when it ETBs. Not an amazing rate for the cost, but remembering this will allow us to cheat in another 5 mana or less permanent with Kadama out makes this much more palatable. Guardian Project is a 4 mana enchantment that draws us a card whenever a non-token creature ETBs. On its own this already provides solid value, but once we start blinking multiple creatures at once, the value it provides can be amazing. Karuga the Macro Sage is a 5 mana creature that draws us a card for each other permanent we control with mana value 3 or higher when it ETBs. The average mana value of our permanents is approximately 4, so when Karuga ETBs we should be able to draw a good number of cards with it. Moldrifter is a 5 mana creature that draws us 2 cards when it ETBs, but more importantly, we can evoke it for only 3 mana. This means with Kadama out, we can pay the reduced cost yet still put into play a 5 mana or less permanent. Mystic Remora and Rhystic Study are both powerful tax effects that help us draw a lot of cards for little mana investment. Prime Speaker Zagana is a 6 mana creature that ETBs with plus 1 plus 1 counters equal to the highest powered creature we have on board, then draws us cards equal to that number. With Kadama out this will be at least 7, but even without Kadama you should expect somewhere between 4 to 9 cards on average. Soul of the Harvest is a 6 mana creature that draws us a card each time another non-token creature ETBs. Essentially a guardian project on a body, coming in as a 6-6 with Trample also makes this a great attacker or blocker. Sylvan Library is a 2 mana enchantment that can help us draw up to 2 additional cards each turn if we pay a hefty life loss. A cheap and powerful way to keep our hand full, while the life loss adds up quickly, by the time we are chaining off with Kadama, often that won't matter in the end. The Great Henge is a 9 mana enchantment that taps to add 2 mana and 2 life, while also drawing us a card and adding a counter to each non-token creature that ETBs. In addition, we can reduce the cost of the Great Henge by X, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. A powerful card in almost any creature based deck, but here we gain even more value for two reasons. Firstly, we plan on blinking our creatures, often many at once, meaning we can draw many cards from its ability. And secondly, when Kadama triggers from this entering, we can put any permanent into play with mana value 9 or less, even though we may only have spent 2-3 to three mana to cast it. 
Tashana, Voice of Thunder, is a 7 mana creature that grants us no maximum hand size and draws us cards based on the number of creatures we control. In addition, her power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in our hand. A potentially big beta that lets us keep all the cards we draw when blinking Tashana repeatedly makes this an easy include in the deck. Our last card advantage card is Torsten, Founder of Banalia, a 7 mana creature that says, when Torsten ETBs, reveal the top 7 cards of your library. Put any number of creature and or land cards from among them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Also, when Torsten dies, create 711 white soldier creature tokens. Another powerful card draw effect staple to an ETB, although we don't get to potentially keep all the cards we draw, in most cases we'll be keeping at least 4. In addition, it comes attached to a big body and also provides us with some bodies should the board get wiped. And that covers all our card advantage pieces. Now let's look at the cards that are going to interact with our opponents and keep their plans at bay. First up is Acidic Slime, a 5 mana creature that lets us destroy an artifact, enchantment or land when it ETBs. Slime offers a great variety of options for removing problematic permanents, especially lands such as Nykthos or Cabal Coffers, while also being a great blocker thanks to having Death Touch. Agent of Treachery is a 7 mana creature that lets us gain control of any permanent when it ETBs. Steel effects can often be powerful, even when only stealing one thing, but because with Kadama we also get to put another large permanent into play, Agent provides even more value. However, once we also introduce blink effects and turn it into a card advantage engine as well, this card becomes even more threatening. Angel of the Ruins is a 7 mana creature that exiles up to 2 artifacts and or enchantments when it ETBs. Removing 2 important card types is a powerful effect, but what makes it particularly potent is exiling them, making it almost impossible for your opponents to get them back. That combined with a strong evasive body makes this a worthy include for the deck. Aura Shards is a 3 mana enchantment that lets us destroy an artifact or enchantment whenever we have a creature ETB. Another card that is great in any creature deck, but thanks to our blink cards this will quickly become a repeatable mass removal spell for our opponent's artifacts and enchantments. Endurance is a 3 mana creature with flash and evoke that says, when Endurance enters the battlefield, up to one target player puts all the cards from their graveyard on the bottom of their library in a random order. So a card that largely acts as graveyard hate in a pinch, having flash and evoke also means we can use this reactively to a graveyard player about to go off. In addition, coming attached to a body means we also get to make use of Kadama's ability. Coggle of the Titan Ape is a 6 mana creature that fights a creature an opponent controls when it ETBs, and when it attacks, it destroys an artifact or enchantment the defending player controls. In addition, you can pay 2 mana to return a human to your hand and give Coggle indestructible until end of turn. This creature provides a lot of value by being able to get rid of nearly all the permanent types we care about while also being attached to a hefty body. Also make sure to pay attention to the humans we do run in the deck like Agent of Treachery or Cloud Blazer, as we can use Coggler's ability and Kadama's trigger to get additional value from these creatures. Luminate Primordial is a 7 mana creature that can exile up to one creature from each opponent and they gain life equal to the power when Primordial ETBs. A great removal spell that permanently gets rid of problematic creatures and when we hit our blink spells, goes far in keeping the board clear of any threats. Mystic Reflection is a 2 mana instant that can be foretold for 1 mana and says, Choose target non-legendary creature. The next time one or more creatures or planeswalkers enter the battlefield this turn, they enter as copies of the chosen creature. So in some cases, we can use this as interaction against our opponents, specifically powerful commanders or creatures they are trying to resolve. But in other cases, we can use this to gain immense value and even potentially win the game. For example, imagine having Avenger of Zendikar ETB and with the plant trigger on the stack, casting Mystic Reflection targeting Avenger. Now when the plants ETB, all of them will become Avengers, creating an absolutely massive army of plant tokens which will get huge with even one land played after. This will probably be one of the most fun cards you can play in the deck due to the wild number of things you can do with it. Sludge Monster is a 5 mana creature that says, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, put a slime counter on up to one other target creature. Also, non-horror creatures with slime counters on them lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 2-2. Being able to nullify powerful creatures like commanders while this creature is on the battlefield is a powerful effect to have, but being able to continually use it thanks to it also being an attack trigger should ensure this provides continuous value. Thorn Mammoth is a 7 mana creature that fights up to one creature we don't control every time it or another creature we control ETBs. Creature removal that can be used repeatedly is a powerful effect to have, but when we can blink it, we reset the damage done on it from previous fights, ensuring we can kill multiple creatures in a single turn. Our last interactive piece is Venser, Shape of Savant, a 4 mana creature that bounces a spell or permanent to its owner's hand when it ETBs. Versatile removal by allowing us to also interact on the stack, however we can also use this on our own creatures to replay them through casting or Kadama triggers to get their ETBs again and again. And that's all our interactive cards. 
Now we have mentioned blink effects a few times when discussing some of the other cards in this deck, so let's move on to discuss what type of blink effects we're running. Our first card is Brago, King Eternal, a 4 mana creature that lets us blink any number of non-land permanents when it deals combat damage to a player. Perhaps one of the most powerful blink effects in the deck due to its mass blink effect that is repeatable, with Kadama out the value you will gain from this will be so high your opponents will have to kill it as soon as possible. Eerie Interlude and Ghostway are 3 mana instants that let us exile all our creatures and return them to the battlefield at the next end step. So not only do we get huge value by casting this with Kadama out, but we also get extra utility by using it as a protection spell in response to a board wipe. Emil the Blessed is a 4 mana creature that lets us pay 3 to blink a creature once. While not as powerful overall as some of our other options, being able to do this again and again based on the mana we have available makes this a strong grind piece. Ephemerate is a 1 mana instant that lets us blink one creature, but then allows us to do the same again during our next upkeep. Mana for mana this provides a lot of value and also doubles as a protection spell in response to targeted removal. Soul Herder is a 3 mana creature that blinks a creature of ours on our end step and also gains a plus 1 plus 1 counter every time any creature is exiled from the battlefield. This creature is a cheap and repeatable blink source that also grows large quickly when our blink engines are online. Teleportation Circle is a 4 mana enchantment that can blink a creature or artifact on our end step. Although more expensive than Soul Herder by 1 mana, it makes up for the cost by being able to target an artifact and being harder to remove thanks to being an enchantment. Thassa Deep Dwelling is a 4 mana enchantment creature that also blinks a creature on our end step, except it's also indestructible and able to tap down any problematic creatures like a one shot kill commander swinging in. These factors combined make this the best end step blink card we run. Last up is Yorion Sky Nomad, a 5 mana creature that says, when it ETBs, exile any number of other non land permanents you own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. While not as cheap as our other mass blink spells, being attached to a body means when we encounter our other blink spells like Teleportation Circle or Thassa, we can repeatedly blink all of our non-land permanents for incredible value. And that covers all our blink spells. Now let's move on and discuss our utility cards and see how they help with our overall game plan. First up is Cloudstone Curio, a 3 mana artifact that says, whenever a non-artifact permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. As we begin blinking and cheating permanents into play with Kadama, we can run into multiple issues, such as needing to draw more cards or interact with more of our opponent's pieces. With this card, we are able to get those effects we need by casting a spell, then stacking the triggers right so we can return the creature we need to our hand using Cloudstone, then putting it back into play using Kadama's trigger. This will get convoluted at times, especially when you mass blink the board, but the effort is worth it for the sheer power and utility it offers. Eternal Witness and Timeless Witness are creatures that allow us to return a card from our graveyard to our hand. Great recursion pieces in any deck, they give us the utility to get back the powerful cards we need in addition to providing Kandama triggers as well. Panharmonicon is a 4 mana artifact that allows us to double up on our ETBs and Kandama triggers. If this sticks around with Kandama out, there are a few decks that will be able to handle the value this combination will deliver. What may come close, however, is our last utility piece, Preston the Vanisher, a 4 mana creature that says, Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't cast, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a zero white illusion. Also, you can pay 2 mana and sack 5 illusions to exile a non-land permanent. Preston allows us to essentially double up on our creature ETBs by making an illusion copy of those creatures when we blink them or cheat them in with Kadama, which gives us huge value with Kadama because the token copies still retain the mana value of the non-token originals. Not only this, but there are some creatures like Agent of Treachery or Soul Herder where we actually benefit from having multiple copies on board. Overall, this card is a very strong inclusion for the deck that should allow some powerful plays to occur. And that covers our utility cards. Now let's move on to discuss any lands worth mentioning. Castle Garin Brig is a land that we can pay 4 mana into and tap to produce 6 green mana. A great way to get Kadama out a turn earlier than we otherwise could, it also helps pay for many of our other expensive creatures. Field of the Dead creates 2-2 two -two zombie tokens for each land that ETBs once we control 7 or more lands with different names. With the amount of lands that we can put into play, this will pull a lot of weight, especially in the mid to late game where playing more lands is normally less impactful. Our last land to discuss is Glasspool Mimic, an MDFC that comes into play tapped on the land side, but on the creature side enters as a copy of any creature we control. We have many creatures we would like to copy, in particular our expensive creatures with powerful ETBs, so being able to get their effects again at only 3 mana is most welcome. Not only this, but when we start blinking multiple creatures at once, we can keep resetting which creature glass pool copies, ensuring we get the ETBs we need at the time. And that's the deck. 
Kadama and Ishai provides a fresh take on the blink strategy by trading out a blink effect in the command zone for a powerful ETB effect for permanence. While this reduces the consistency of blink in itself, it also allows the deck to play bigger bombs and therefore get more value from its ETBs when we do blink those permanents. This is unlike many other blink decks which tend to blink more small to medium value permanents, going for quantity over quality. Kadama's triggered ability also allows a unique play pattern in being able to cheat in permanents that would otherwise be countered by your opponents. This introduces a layer of fun and complexity that makes the deck a challenge to play for you and your opponents. Well, that's it from me today. If you'd like to see how this deck performs, then make sure to check in with the channel because we will have some gameplay videos up so you can see the deck in action. But until then, take care guys.